everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. The death of rugby, inverted commas or question mark, um, is uh, something that's currently being thrown around on social media after Sands are officially confirmed the law variations uh, for the rugby championship, the upcoming rugby championship, which has been met with, to be perfectly honest, a lot of disdain, a lot of backlash and uh, fairly a lot of uh, a lot of anger because it's once again showing how rugby is going down a very, very dangerous road where we are getting away from the key principles that make rugby union, rugby union and not rugby league. As well as in, in a time where we talk about officiating being so um, controversial and so widely spoken, laws that are going to make officiating even more difficult, create even more issues with regards to people understanding how it, 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 it is uh, policed and, uh, and officiated, which is just going to make everything a little more confusing. Um, so not great, to be perfectly honest. Let's go through them, shall we? Because there are four law variations. I'm going to go through each one. Uh, in the essence, there are the red card rule, the countdown clock for a scrum, loud and kick at goal, um, protection of, of, of the nine at the base of the scrum, ruck and at the mall, as well as play on for a line out, uh, straight, not sh play on for a line out, not straight if the throw is uncontested. Um, let's have a look, shall we? Uh, this is the uh, the laws that have been confirmed. Now, speaking on the laws, uh, the Sands are CEO Brendan Morris said as follows. The rugby championship is, a, is the flagship of the sport in the Southern Hemisphere, and annually we, we see the best players in the world battled out for the title. We believe this year's championship that has been keenly anticipated by the players and rugby fans will again exhibit the best of the game of what the game has to offer with exciting, tough action on the field, enhanced by the evolution in the laws of the game. Sansa, on behalf of its member unions, continue to explore ways to make the rugby championship and rugby in general even more attractive to fans. In 2024, the rugby championship is back to its full format with 12 tests played across Argentina, Australia, New Zealand and South Africa. Um, and then just talks about the fact that it kicks off and etc 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 um all a little bit relevant because the main thing we want to talk about are the law variations let's get stuck into this shall we first of all the red card if in the event of foul play is determined to be deliberate and with a high level of danger it will result in a full red card yes you heard that right a full red card not a half red card a full red card um so now we've got red cards and even worse red cards not a different type of card no, one bad red card, an even worse red card. So a full red card will result in the defending player not returning to the field, nor will he be able to replace. It's an incredible concept. It's um, actually been done before previously. Um, in fact, quite a lot of sports, including rugby, it's called a red card. The way that it's been done for how many years? It works. Leave it. But no, then we have to go with all other red cards. Again, not a different shade of red you know, that do not meet the above threshold will be a 20-minute red card in which the offending player will be removed from the match but will be entitled to be replaced by another player after 20 minutes. The offending team will then be able to replace the red card player with one of their available replacements. The rationale is that the individual, not the game, should be punished for red card offences. I hate that argument, by the way. It is a team sport. You miss a tackle, your team concedes a try. You score a try, your team gets five points. You make a big tackle and force a knock on, your team benefits. You get a red card, your team is affected as it should be. You know, that's the deterrent. You know, that heartbreaking moment of knowing you've let your team, your nation, you know, all of that down. That is, an, that is, the, that is a deter deterrent. You know, this whole thing of, what well, don't ruin the game. Nonsense. There are so many games with red cards, which have been absolute thrillers. There are teams that have been galvanized by red cards. New Zealand almost pushed South Africa right to the edge, almost won the Rugby World Cup. I started playing better off that red card because they kind of lifted themselves up for it. You know, I don't think there's any actual evidence to that, that suggests that a red card ruins games of inverted commons. It's part of the game. We need our players to change the behavior. That is the deterrent. This whole a full red card, not a full red card, load of nonsense. Absolute load of nonsense. If you are going to do something like this, you're going to have to have an orange card and a red card. You're going to have to introduce a new card. We can't sit there with a full red card and a half red card sitting there in a the bunker. What's going to happen? Far too complicated. The next one is probably the most one of the most controversial ones. Um, and so actually going back to the red card. Imagine the officiating now. Now we need to basically, not only does a ref need to decide between a yellow and a red, but a red and a full red. So there's a TMO bunker. We're now going to have to be judge, jury, executioner, and doing this all within like six minutes. 
you know that's just kind of the issue and this this is absolutely hostile pass for the officials how they think this is going to work i do not know i don't think it's going to work i think it's going to be a disaster uh but we wait and see next is the countdown clock for scrum lines and kicks at goal now the theory about this is is all right you know um basically whenever in doubt world rugby and all these rugby uh, tournaments throw up speed of play as the be all and end all of uh, of uh, of uh, of rugby and, and and ball and play time and there's absolutely no evidence by the way to suggest that more ball and time for example is more entertaining um there's also a lot to suggest that you know how running rugby for example just for the sake of running rugby you know be more entertaining than a tight game you know it's when fans complain about rugby and, and rugby spectacle, I don't think speed and play and ball and play is the top of the of the uh, the the list. You know, for example, you watched that New Zealand, I mean, the South Africa versus um, Ireland game last during the World Cup. Bill was one of the best test matches ever, um, and that the ball and time play, for example, was was criticised by Ian Foster. And New Zealand then hammered Italy, you know, by 40 points. And the ball in time play, by the way, it wasn't actually much more, but it was more. And you sit there going, well, which one would you rather watch? And we all know which one people would rather watch. Anyway, this is how it works. So a player will have 60 seconds to kick a goal when a try is scored, or seconds, 60 seconds to kick a goal um, from a penalty from the time the referee is informed of kick a goal option. This used to be um, so it used to be 9 seconds, 60 seconds, now both down to 60 seconds. If a player exceeds this limit, the conversion kick shall not be counted or kicked. Play restarts at the center mark for a penalty scrum um, is awarded to the non-kicking team at the place of a penalty. Um, so that's I mean that's 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 one of the few things where scrums actually coming back, back making its uh, return. B a scrum must be set thirty seconds from when the mark for the scrum is made by the referee. A free kick shall be awarded at place of scrum against the team causing the delay. Similarly, a lineout must be formed thirty seconds from the AR signaling the place of the lineout. A free kick shall be awarded on the fifty meter line against team causing the delay. The rationale is to speed up ball returning to play after a score, kick, or touch, or scrum. Now, on the face of it, you said they go, oh, well, you know, maybe we shouldn't take so long, you know. With, and, I, and I must admit, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan. I'm a, I, I don't enjoy reset scrums, for example, because sometimes they get a bit hectic. But, but, they are a necessary evil within rugby union because scrums are such a big part of it. And now this is the big law that that, that people are taking exception with. The idea that we are depowering the scrum, that we are taking away the set piece. And South Africans are taking it very, very personally because we've obviously had such a good... Um, um, recent history when it comes to, to the, the, the scrums. Now... Um, in terms of scenarios, um, Jared Wright, who I've mentioned before on the channel as well, I'm going to go follow him on Twitter, uh, or X, Jared Wright 17 um, has proposed a couple of scenarios, and this is what some of the things that people are, are, are talking about, why we're now losing, you know, what it is to have, have rugby union. Um, and he says that this, the potential way to avoid a scrum in the rugby championship is once the referee provides the mark, they could delay the set piece for longer than 30 seconds and concede a free kick. Now, with the new laws, you cannot take a scrum from a free kick which means the opposition have got two options they can take a quick tap or they have to kick it but they have to kick it to the opposition or kick it to touch where they lose possession so from an attacking scrum for example if the other team is being battered at a scrum time um, and don't back themselves at scrum time in terms of conceding a penalty in terms of providing an attacking set piece they can basically just sort of fart around for 30 seconds and go oh sorry we'll concede a free kick and now for example the attacking team have only got two options which is tap and go or kick to touch where they don't get the line. Whereas if they were to have the scrum and win a penalty, they could kick for goal, they could um, call for a scrum, and they could go to touch. Attacking line, attacking scrum, kick for goal, points, or quick tap. So it's a very easy way of teams battling with scrums to just say, well, we can just concede the scrum bait, we'll just concede a free kick. Now, in theory, the referees are able to punish teams if they feel they're doing it direct, deliberately, for example, or if it's a recurring offense, then they can upgrade to a full penalty, but that's going to take some time. So there's already a little bit of a loophole of how teams can manipulate this law variation. Um, the same thing can technically be done with the lineups. So, for example, a team gets a penalty and it kicks it to touch inside the, 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 the Team Beast 22, maybe the only more is working really well. And now they're going, ooh, if we have a... If we have a um, if we have a line out here and we have a rolling more, we're in trouble here. If they then delay it and take more than 30 seconds to uh, to form the line out, then there's a free kick on the 50-meter line, which once again means that they can set up defensively 
get their defensive system sorted, um, or else the other team has to kick it, or else they can kick it to touch, but they lose possession of the ball. So once again, you know, removing potentially removing the the advantage of um, of having that lineup, for example, um, they also can't opt for a scrum on the fifty meter line, which if, if they had kept the scrum as a free kick law would have been an option, and then that would have added a bit more jeopardy, you know, because then. You know, you, you, you delay it by 30 seconds. Cool, it's a free kick. They can take a scrum. You delay the line by, by, by 30 seconds. All right, cool, free kick. Now, for example, you've conceded a line out, but now you've got you've conceded a potential scrum on your, like, five-meter line or your 22, you know, which if a team's got scrum dominance. So it's removed. It's removing set pieces, and um, that's frustrating because set pieces are so important when it comes to rugby union. The role of a prop is going to be changing a lot in the next few years because we just we are going to have fewer scrums. Scrums are being taken out less and less as an option to turn to, which is really frustrating because, for example, you watch that scrum try against Ireland in the first test against Loftus. Now, I don't care if you are a rugby thoroughbred fan, watch every single game. If you are a casual fan, look at the reaction to the crowd when you see that scrum. It is phenomenal to watch. People understand the significance of a scrum. The pure power, for example... And we're, we're taking it away. We really are. We're moving away from fewer scrums. That's number two. Uh, number three is the protection of the nine at the base of the scrum at ruck and at the mall. Um, it's three different variations. So a player who is part of the ruck may not play an opponent who is near it and who is attempting to play the ball away. Near is defined law as being within one meter and as a penalty. So if you play the scrum off, if you are within a meter and attempt to play the scrum off um, at the ruck, then you are... Um, going to be sanctioned with a penalty. Um, more is a player who's probably more may not play an opponent near it and who's attempted to play the ball away. Once again, penalty. And um, scrum similarly, once play in the scrum begins, the scrum off of the team not in possession must take up a position with both feet no further than the center line of the tunnel. You now have to be, so for example, you used to actually, I think it's have to be at the last feet of, um, the, of where the ball is behind the ball. You now have to be basically in line with your team. Um, so, uh, so, or permanently retire to the point on the on offside line, either at the team's hindmost foot or permanently retire at least five meters um, behind the hindmost foot, otherwise a penalty. So you can sit there on sort of halfway in the scrum, sort of basically where the tunnel is. You can go back to the eighth man or you go back to being in line with your with the, with the rest of your back line, for example. Um, it's an interesting one, you know, in theory. So, so the rationale is that all three measures allow us to come off or play in that role to play the ball away cleanly. Um, from the player without disruption. Once again, they're trying to just promote, you know, free, clean, quick ball. You know, I think that this is giving far too much protection for the scrum off. You know, I think that you should be able to put a scrum off under 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 pressure because messy ball is how you, for example, can change momentum. So now you're going to have guaranteed clean ball the entire time. The idea is to just be able to, you know, create attacking opportunities and, and attacking structures. But again, I, I think it's needless. I don't think we need to change it, you know. Um, it's, 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 you know, again, it's deep in the scrum, for example, because now if you're under pressure at scrum time, you know, the nines are going to take the ball out. Now they don't have to worry. Now they can go and find the ball behind, underneath the lock's foot and they can get that out. So again, the scrum is becoming far less competitive than it was. Um, this is the only one I don't mind, which is play on for a line, not straight if the throw is uncontested. Uh, it says the law dictates the ball must be thrown into the line out straight. Uh, however, if the defending team are not lifted to compete for the ball, then play shall continue in the instance a throw may, may appear not straight. If the defending team lifts a teammate to compete for the ball and a throw is not deemed straight by referee, then they shall be offered the option of a line or a scrum. If the line is chosen and the ball is again not thrown straight, a scrum is awarded to the team originally uh, that originally threw in the ball. Um, so the rationale there is don't doesn't force stop and play when no material offence has taken place. Again, this whole obsession with stop you know stopping ball and play, I I don't like it. But I don't mind this to be perfectly honest. You know, I think that you should have to compete for the lineup to make it competitive. If you decide not to compete and the ball is slightly straight. You know, I think that's on you. I think this encourages more teams to compete at the line out, um, to 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 make sure that the other team has to be accurate. I think this is a. I think this is a pretty. I mean, some people are, are raging about this. I don't really mind this rule. I think it's a bit inconsequential. Um, I think this is. I think it is a bit of a needless thing. So if you do want to stop, you know, stoppages that can prevent, I think this is a pretty easy one not to do. Uh, it forces teams to compete. Otherwise, and luck. So I don't mind that rule. Um, but everything else I think is pretty problematic. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think? 
That's what I want to know. Let me know what you think of those laws down in the comments below. I'm not a fan of the three out of the four, to be perfectly honest. And the red card is ridiculous. And I think, you know, the continual move to depower scrums and the shot clock, whilst the nice concept of speeding up game and play, I think it prevents far too many loopholes for, for teams to manipulate it to so some teams that can't compete physically and are struggling when it comes to scrum and stuff like that. You know, it's an easy way of them to just nullify that whole entire advantage, which is frustrating because that's what makes rugby union make the union. You know, 15 players of different shapes and sizes all coming together to play the sport. We're moving away from that. Very frustrating. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.